one more interview for the um, Santos Festival of Cycling. And finally, I'm talking to a bike rider who's going to compete, Grace Brown. It seems odd for me to think that I haven't spoken with Grace Brown until today. So I'm looking forward to this interview. She came fourth in the Olympic uh, time trial in 2021. She's been around for quite a while and it's a new team for her next year. She's going to uh, FDJ Nouvelle Aquitania, if I said that correctly. One, two, three. Welcome to Ride Media, Grace Brown. How are you? Thanks, Rob. Yeah, I'm good. Nice to uh, meet you face to face. Well, virtually. <laughs> the sound is clear as a bell. The image isn't terrific, but um, I think you're up in the mountains. Is that right? Yeah, I'm regional, so um, it's yeah, it's not great uh, a... Wi-Fi connection here. First of all, I'll start the interview by saying sorry that we haven't spoken until now. It's remiss of me not to have called and done some interviews like over the last five or six years. It's kind of crazy, especially reading through your resume. It's like Mrs. Consistency, you could say. <laughs> uh, yeah, in the, in the last uh, two years, it's um, been pretty good. But yeah, I was, um, I guess, fairly junior for a few years there. So um yeah, no apology needed. Do you feel like you've come of age a little bit with the Olympic experience under your belt and uh, now moving to an international team? Does it feel like a whole new beginning for you? Yeah, definitely. I think in the last year um, I've gone from being uh, a bit of a bit of a rookie and and not um, yeah not being that confident in you know being a leader or whatever um, to, yeah, sort of owning my space um, a little bit in the cycling scene. So, yeah, I guess coming coming of age is probably a good way to put it. I'm curious about the team change. You, was it just um, an opportunity for uh, New Horizons, uh, a fresh beginning? Can you give us a little yeah. bit of a background to that uh, the decision? Yeah, I, I uh, sort of like didn't, didn't plan necessarily to change teams um, earlier in the year, but with some of my results, um, especially during the spring, I started getting quite a bit of interest from other teams and it made me start to really reflect on um, what I wanted and what I wanted my future to be in the sport, especially, you know, when you get to the end of your career and you look back, um, on what you've done and I want to have a really full experience in my cycling career so um, I think that involves um, yeah having a bit of bit more experience on different teams so stepping away from the comfort of the Australian outfit and yeah seeing what it's like on a French team and getting to know a few more people and broadening the whole experience of being a professional cyclist. Oh, super. You get the opportunity. You've got to seize it with both hands. Where are you yeah. going to change your living setup or how, how, can we just go into a little bit of that Euro detail? The past three years I've lived uh, in the Varese region of northern Italy. That's where Green Edge has been based. I quite like it there, so I'm going to continue staying in the area. Um, it's, yeah, it's beautiful with... Lake Como and Lake Maggiore um, and lots of really good climbs. So um, it's it's good for training. It's close to Milan Airport. So it sort of ticks all the boxes of what you need as a pro cyclist. Okay. I was waiting for you to say, and I'm going to move to Girona. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, I don't know whether it's like me being a little bit stubborn or um, <laughs> what the reason is, but yeah, I, I've sort of been resistant to following the crowd to Girona. <laughs> you as a bike rider, I imagine you've had thousands of tests and uh, travel has just been like fraught with angst. And the, the main stress has been the restrictions between Australia and the rest of the world. Yeah, being able to come home has been quite stressful. But well, in Europe... Yeah, I've been lucky to have a lot of that stress taken away by the team um, management, just organising all the logistics of getting tests and, you know, when we need to get them and all the forms that we need to 
have to get on a flight or or whatever. So a lot of that um, stress is thankfully taken away on the day to day basis. But yeah, definitely. Um, I've found it quite hard each year trying to come home and not knowing um, when that's going to happen, if you're going to get flights cancelled, um, yeah, stuff like that. So it, it's been a pretty tough two years to be over in Europe, but um, at the same time we've had lots of privileges um, because of our jobs. So, yeah, some good, some bad. Yeah, and just entirely different to what you probably would have anticipated not that long ago, like life for most people in this, this strange times. Let's talk a little bit about the Santos Festival of Cycling, if we can. Do you anticipate going to uh, the Santos Festival of Cycling and the three stages, which have got a little bit of variety, uh, a lot of varied terrain? Will yeah. you have a national champions jersey on? Am I putting pressure on with a question like that? <laughs> I mean, I, I would like that. I'm going to be racing for the um, national team anyway, so I'll be oh. be in the green and gold regardless. But, um, yeah, I guess it's a slightly different jersey for the national champion. I would love um, to get the jersey because I've finished on the podium uh, three times now. Uh, I've got two, two bronzes and one silver in the road race at nationals, um, and I think I... It's about time I complete that set and get a get a gold. But yeah, obviously it's going to be hard being on my own in the peloton with no support. So I just have to play it smart, I think. Can you just talk me through how you see your cycling repertoire? Yeah, so because I started cycling um, later than than most. I have mainly done road, but yeah, occasionally I'll get my hands on a mountain bike and just, you know, go out for fun. I've done a little bit of track. Other than aero testing for my time trial, like it's been quite limited. Yeah, there's been a little bit of interest in in trying to get me to do more track, but yeah, I, I see it as quite a thing to juggle um, when you're focusing on on big targets on the road and time trial to then try and do some track racing as well. If it can work, uh, I'll consider it. I'm basing some of my questions on your, on just your results. So I'm, you know, I'm categorising you as a time trial specialist. Are you comfortable in the bunch or are you, pref you happier to be on the time trial bike? Uh, no, I'm, I'm, yeah, comfortable in the bunch. You know, my first couple of years racing, I was, I probably would have been less comfortable in the bunch and and when you start cycling a little bit later it's the hardest thing to catch up on is the skills required for racing in the peloton but now I feel yeah quite confident it's not something that I stress about too much anymore and between now and um and the nationals for example is there any downtime or are you will you for example, be training Christmas Bay or do you, how do you structure the next little while when most people are considering it the, the festive season, but <laughs> still it's the business season? Yeah, I, um, it's always a bit of a struggle just um, managing the festive season and quite a heavy load of training, but um, I see it as a positive. If you go out for a decent ride on Christmas morning, then you can have uh, more food at the <laughs> at Christmas, so <laughs> it's um, it's not bad. You don't you don't feel so guilty about it. I think, um, yeah, it's important to give yourself a little bit of slack there and not not set too strict of rules because really in the end it's only a couple of days and there's still plenty of time before the racing kicks off. I'm sure we'll see a lot of you at the nationals and uh, and then again um, when the, the live streaming of the Festival of Cycling begins. And um, yeah. thanks for having a quick chat and just giving us a, an intro of what uh, what's yet to come from the, the Grace Brown story. Yeah, no worries. My pleasure. Nice to meet you. Thanks, Rob.